Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Hello, everyone. Good morning. I'm Ron Pini. Nice to see you. It's tall here. Pini is not tall. Sorry. <laughs> no problem. You are very tall. Sorry. <laughs> Just uh, one more minute until everyone's audio will be on. Okay. Welcome uh, everyone to Provision ISR seminar. Thank you very much for joining us. A uh, few uh, things just before we start. Uh, first of all, uh, during this uh, seminar, your microphones are being uh, muted. Uh, any question you might have, feel free to write it in the chat or wait until the end of this seminar. We're going to leave room for question and we're going to answer all of it. Uh, this seminar is about uh, the fifth seminar about DDA analytics. Uh, today we're going to touch mostly the triggers, how to activate something when DDA uh, event occurred. Um, with me is uh, Tal, who will conduct this seminar. This seminar is being recorded. At the end of the seminar, we'll give you access to the recording. Plus, uh, you are more than, uh, we have the same seminar in about five hours from now, so you are more than welcome to join again or invite any one of your colleagues or customers. Thank you very much and enjoy. Tal, go ahead. Okay, one second, let me start the... Okay, you can see the, just confirm, you can see the uh, presentation? Yes. Okay, hi everyone. Like Amron said, today is the uh, demonstration, the presentation about how to activate triggers uh, based on DDA analytics from all the different platforms, IPC, uh, NVRs, and the OCFEMS. Um, we will touch everything. Some of it I will, I will show, some of it I will just touch on the presentation. If you have any questions, please feel free to open your mic, ask whatever you want, and I can uh, uh, even demonstrate live on how to do it and how to uh, work with it. Okay, so what we're going to touch today is short introduction about uh, uh, triggers, uh, application scenario, a little bit of when and how we will use uh, different uh, uh, triggers or different platforms, and of course, how to set it on the different uh, uh, work platforms. Okay, so like uh, in the previous presentations, uh, David spoke about uh, DDA analytics. We are talking about line crossing, uh, sterile area and object counting. And of course, everything is based on human detection, four wheel detection and two wheel detection. Okay, so DDA video analytics are basically here for two reasons, some of them are some of the reasons are um, to reduce false alarms, what we usually had from motion detection or from pixel-based uh, analytics. So we want to reduce false alarms. The other, uh, uh, if we already reduce the false alarms and we know that the probability of the uh, alarm is real alarm, we also want to trigger some kind of, uh, um, or to activate some kind of devices like sirens, uh, um, in order to deter the, the threat that, that the camera recognized, if it's a thief or a burglar, for example. So once we detected him and we activate the siren, he knows that we detect him and he might leave sooner or he might, uh, we might even prevent him from, uh, from getting in uh, from the beginning with, if we detected him outside. We also can activate um, notifications to ourselves, like emails and push notifications to provision come to mobile app. And then we know that we might have, uh, um, 
event going on in our house, in our office, we can check and see what is going on and to decide how to, how to handle the, the event. Okay, the different uh, types of uh, uh, triggers that we have is alarm output. Okay, alarm output in general, uh, basically you can connect everything to it. With everything, I mean mostly things with uh, uh, low voltage, not uh, AC 200 uh, or 100 volt, but everything that requires uh, low voltage, like uh, LED, LED lights, strobe lights, uh, sirens, gates to open a gate to close the gate and so on and so on uh, everything is being used by alarm out it's actually a relay but the name alarm out got stuck to it from the from the beginning of time but it's actually a relay with the, this relay you can do whatever whatever you want any low voltage system can be connected to the alarm out push notification is to the mobile phone okay provision come to of course, if everything is uh, configured, push notification is only supported by NVRs at the moment. And uh, we know we have a lot of demand to add it also to the IPC and uh, of course to the VMS, uh, but we will, uh, we will add it later on. At the moment, it, we only do it on the NVRs. Emails, of course, it's the older generation of uh, uh, push of notifications, okay? You can send email by the system. Email is supported by all the platform, NVRs, DVR, NPRs, VMS, and the uh, IP cameras. Buzzer, okay, buzzer can be a local buzzer. Uh, I mean, mostly local buzzer. It doesn't have to be a buzz like the NVR. The NVR only have a buzzer, but it can, only be a, it can also be a, some kind of an audio file that is being played by the VMS locally, telling that the operator there is something going on. Audio broadcast, okay. Uh, audio broadcast is supported only by the VMS at the moment. So we can broadcast any audio file that we upload to the system through the audio out of the uh, IP cameras or NVRs. Video pop-up, okay, to pop up the video uh, to, the, to the main screen or to the secondary screen if it's a, a VMS, I will show it as well. A snapshot is to take the snapshot of the event and save it on the SD card or on the local hard drive. PTZ preset, if we have a PTZ installed somewhere, uh, of course in the same site, we can, we can set different presets that are looking more or less to the same direction of the cameras. And then when the camera, when the DTA camera detects a person, for example, it can call the, pre the PTZ preset so the PTZ will also give us a look or a view on the same area where the DDA camera is looking. And the last one, of course, the most obvious one is recording. Okay, recording on SD card, recording on hard drive, NVR or DVR, VMS, it doesn't really matter. Okay, of course, we can activate some of them or all of them simultaneously. Okay, we, don't, we are not confined to only one of them. Okay. Some application scenarios. Okay, so let's take, for example, home safety. If you have a DDA camera uh, outside or inside your home, okay, of course, we, uh, um, we want to get the alert as soon as possible or as early as possible. So we prefer getting the first, the first alerts from the uh, outdoor cameras, not from the indoor cameras, because if we are getting it from the indoor cameras, it means that the burglar is already inside. But uh, just uh, general information in the USA, for example, 2.2 million burglaries happening once every year. It means that approximately every 15 seconds, a home is being, uh, uh, burglary is happening in a, in a home in the United States. It's a lot, okay? So for example, if we have DDA cameras, the best triggers are emails and push notifications so the, the person will know that something is happening in the house. Okay, for safety, we can set sterile area on uh, hazardous uh, places. 
like in the image, it's uh, uh, toxic waste, or for example, we can take uh, uh, trains or uh, trams on the rails. Of course, no person should be on the rails, and we can set the rails also as a sterile area with human detection. And whenever we have a, a, an event, meaning that we recognize the person in the sterile area, we can use, of course, push notification, and you can also set alarm output, okay, which this alarm output can, can set a strobe light or can lock the area or uh, uh, broadcast an audio that can be heard on the people on spot, meaning that be careful you're going into a hazardous area. Control rooms, of course, it's very obvious when someone is sitting in the control room, they need to know when something is happening. Of course, we can use video pop-ups and we can use local audio or buzzers to uh, notify the operators that something is happening and they should have a look on the alarm monitor or uh, NVR, DVR, and so on. Okay, public or private par parking. Okay, if we have a, a vehicle counting, for example, we know when the parking is full or uh, when it's not full and we can use alarm output to, uh, to even use a traffic light, red light, green light, meaning the, traf the parking is full, parking is not full, or even to lock the gate so it will not open anymore when the parking is full. Okay, now we'll go into the, the, you know, the meat, the flesh of the, the webinar. The setting, okay, how to set it up. So we have three platforms, which is the uh, IPC directly, the NVR interface, and the OSTIA VMS. Okay, when we, will we use each one of them? So cameras, usually we will use when you have small areas, okay, that we don't need a lot of cameras. For example, the one on the left, if we want to look at this uh, statue, one, one camera is enough because you can see on the, from the right side, there is a cliff. From the left side, uh, this, this is the only first place where uh, uh, people can come. And we can set this uh, statue as a sterile area. So if anyone climbs on it or, or uh, tries to tamper with it, we will get a notification from the camera directly. Also, we have what we call rarely used real estate. For example, take this uh, storage room. Uh, it's very common in United States, for example. Uh, this storage room, maybe it's being visited uh, once or twice a year. It's not something that is commonly being uh, uh, tracked. So if we put a camera there, we don't really need a, an NVR, okay? Because when something happens, we need one or two days uh, back. The whole, the other uh, days of the year, there is nothing there. So SD card recording is enough. We can also use the camera for triggers. Okay, in order to configure triggers on the IPC, all we need to do is to log into the camera. Okay, and of course I will do it uh, in a second together with you. And we're going into the analytics section of the settings. Okay, here we will have the different uh, uh, kinds of triggers and I will go through it now together with you before we go to the NVR settings. Okay, so this is, a, this is our camera, of course, uh, um, it's a DDA camera, two megapixel uh, dome. It's installed in our office. And now if I want to configure the triggers, uh, I'm going into the config, analytics. In the analytics, I'm choosing whatever analytics is uh, active. In our case, it's line crossing, okay? And this is, this first of all is our triggers, okay? So the first two, save panoramic picture and save target cutout, are related to the SD card, okay? The SD card is the, is the one that will receive these uh, triggers. Panoramic picture is the whole image, the whole scene. The target cutout is just the, the crop of the, uh, of the person, okay? If I'm going for a second, just for a second to the NVR interface, because I, it's very important that you will understand it. For example, if I take this event, Okay, I want the DA, let's take this one. Okay, so this is the panoramic image. The one on the right is the full image. 
This is what we call on the IPC interface, the panoramic image. And on the left side, this is the, uh, the cutout of the object. I mean, only the object will be uh, saved. Okay, so same here. Panoramic picture is the whole image and the target cutout is just the crop, okay? Alarm holding time is something also that might be confusing for, for some of you. Alarm holding time is just the duration in which no uh, additional alerts will occur. Even if, the, even if the object is still triggering alarms, if the alarm holding time is 20 seconds, it means that between one activation, one trigger to another trigger, there will be a minimum of 20 seconds. Even if the person is walking in the sterile area or crossing the line, okay, we will get the first event and only after 20 seconds, we will get the next event. Okay, you can see that it varies from three seconds to two minutes. Alarm output is of course the alarm output of the camera, the relay of the camera. If the camera ha doesn't have uh, alarm output, we will not see it on the interface. Trigger snapshot, okay. Trigger SD recording. SD recording, of course, is video going to the uh, SD cards. Trigger email and trigger FTP. Of course, if we want to trigger email and we want to trigger FTP, we must configure it first on the network configuration. We, we need to configure the, art, the SMTP. You can see here like uh, uh, David configured it before. So we must configure it. Okay, and if we are using FTP, of course, we also need to add an FTP server. Okay, otherwise we can configure it, but it will not work. Okay, except of that, of course, we have the area, which David already, already spoke about, I'm not going uh, into it, and the schedule. Schedule is being also for the, uh, for the event and the triggers, meaning if we don't want to get triggers on a certain time, we need to remove it from the, uh, from the schedule. Okay. Any questions up to here? Okay, perfect. There was no question also on the chat. Remind you that you can uh, ask questions on the chat and I'll ask on behalf of you or just wait till the end of the seminar. Okay, perfect. Thank you, Amnon. Okay, so for NVRs, it is more or less the same. The difference between NVRs and the uh, IP cameras that I, NVRs contain many IP cameras. So we can, uh, we can cross configure different cameras to different triggers. For example, I can get, the trigger can be, the detection can be from a certain camera, camera A, for example, but we can set the trigger to happen on camera B. I mean, if camera A doesn't have an uh, alarm output, for example, we can use the alarm output of camera B uh, as a trigger to event happening in camera A. And I will show you in a second. So when we will use NVR, we will use NVR when we're monitoring public areas or large areas with more than one camera. So we need the NVR to concentrate more, all of the cameras in one place. And of course, any other application, generally NVRs are the, 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 the core of any CCTV installation, NVR or DVR. But since we are talking on DDA analytics, we are only talking about NVRs because DVRs does not support the DDA analytics yet. Okay, so now how to configure. And again, I will, I will go through all of it uh, in a second together with you. Okay, so main menu, we're going on settings, AI event, AI event, and then we are choosing the analytics that we want to, uh, to set. And then we have the triggers. Okay, and I will go through it together with you in a second. Okay, remember that I'm not going to the pres through the presentation uh, reading it because the, the idea of the presentation is is more just to give me the guideline and eventually to send it to you so you can also see and read it and, uh, uh, and learn or to pass it to your own uh, uh, customers and so on. I want to do the live demonstration. I think it's better for in our case. Okay, so well, now what we see is the NPR local interface. 
Okay, you can see we have DDI cameras, we have LPR cameras, we have face recognition cameras. We are talking about uh, uh, DDA. So now I'm going to the menu, settings. On the settings, I'm clicking on AI slash events. And now we need AI events. And in our case, we are talking about DDA. So DDA are sterile area and line crossing, which both fall under AI perimeter detection. So we are clicking on AI perimeter detection. On the list here, we will get all the cameras that support line crossing and sterile area. Let's go to the same camera that we configured before, the Office DDA, line crossing. So now you can see here the line. This is more the settings that David already spoke with you on, on former uh, uh, previous uh, webinars. We are talking about triggers. Okay, so this is the triggers. The triggers that we have are snapshot, push notification, okay? Snapshot is just, just an image. Push notification is push notification that will be sent to any mobile device that have this device on his uh, mobile uh, app, provision come to. And also you need to make sure that push notification are active on the phone itself. Okay, if we'll have a few minutes left, I will, I will show you how to make sure that everything is configured properly. Buzzer is local buzzer on the NVR. It's a, it's a buzzer that connected to the NVR PCB. So it's actually making a buzzing sound. Video pop-up is to pop up the video of the uh, related camera, the camera that triggered the, the alert. Okay, uh, and emails. Again, emails, we need to configure the emails through the uh, network section, okay? We can do it through here, take us to the network section. So the same as before, you need to set here the, the SMTP server. And also if we want to use the FTP, we need to set the FTP server. And uh, in general, this is it. If I, there is one thing also I wanted to show, one second. If I'm going to the AI event, we spoke about the video pop-up. So if I'm going to event notification on the NVR, and then we go to display, we can set here the duration of the video pop-up. You need to remember that the video pop-up is not permanent. Let's say you are in a nine screen uh, uh, view, and you set video pop-up, then the video pop-up will be on a single screen for this duration, and then the the, the display will return back to what it was before the, the DDA event. Okay, so the video pop-up holding time can be five, 10, 15, and so on, up to one minute. Okay, let's go back to the AI events. And we're talking about perimeter detection, office DDA, and line cross. Okay, back to the triggers. Okay, record. Record is recording of the video on the NVR hard drive, okay? By default, the camera itself will always be on the record. I mean, if the camera is Office DDA, always on an event, it will record Office DDA. But in some occasions, we might want other cameras to, rec to uh, record as well. Why? For example, let's take a, an example that we have a PTZ, and that PTZ is installed on a roof on a very high places, on a very high place. And it's looking more or less on the same area as this camera, as the Office DDA. Okay, it's not possible because Office DDA is uh, inside, but let's think that we have a camera outside and then we have a PTZ looking on the same area from a very high place from the roof of the building. Because the PTZ is very high and the people that it is uh, viewing are very small in size, it might not detect the people not motion and also, of course, not DDA because the object is too small. So in some cases, we, we might want the PTZ to record as well. So we, we set the PTZ, we click on the right arrow, so it will record as well. And from this point on, whenever we have a DDA event, line crossing DDA event, from the camera office DDA, both office DDA and the PTZ, the Z6, will also uh, record, okay? 
Next one is the alarm output. And again, alarm output is just a, a name. Eventually, it is a relay, okay? And the relay, you can connect anything you want to the relay. You can connect a strobe light, you can connect a siren, you can connect a gate, a door, uh, anything that is practically working on a low voltage. And now we need to set which alarm output will be triggered in case we have a line crossing event on the Office DDA camera. So we click configure. Now we have a list of all the alarm outputs that we have available on this, DV, on this NVR. The NVR I'm using is NVR 8, 8200 PFA. So it has four integral uh, alarm outputs. So these are the four, four integral alarm outputs. And except of the integral alarm outputs on the back of the NVR, we have all the alarm outputs of the IP cameras connected to this NVR. So now, for example, let's say I have a door lock connected to the front door face. And I also have a siren connected to alarm out three. And now I confirm. So from this point on, whenever there is a trigger from Office DDA, both alarm out three and front door face alarm out will be activated. And each one will activate whatever is connected to it. Like I said, in, in, my, in my demo, in my uh, example, front door face will lock the door and alarm out three will activate the siren. Okay, the last one is a PTZ preset. Okay, of course, PTZ preset, we must have a, a PTZ. And many of our cameras support RS485. But eventually, in this case, I only have one PTZ, which is the Z6. Okay, you can see here that I don't have any presets saved on, saved on it. So, one second, we will do it, the whole process together. I'm going to the live video. And this is our PTZ. Okay, I'm going to the PTZ control. I, I'm, I'm using this. Uh, I'm using this webinar also to show off our new Z6 PTZ. Okay, so let's say I want to look downwards towards the parking, and now I will save the the position. Sorry, I will save a position. I will call it parking, or just park to save time. Now, one question while you do it yes. regarding video pop up. Yes. Video pop up is basically the live video pop up, correct? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. From the minute, so basically it means that I'm sitting in front of me and my NVR, my screen is, let's say, uh, completely dark. I don't see any images as a pop up yes. screen, for example. And only when event occurred, the DDA event occurred, we can pop up the live video from the camera. Correct. Thank you. Okay, so I saved the uh, preset called parking. And now I'm going back to the configuration. Okay, the same office DDA. By the way, you can see that this PTZ is here also because it support uh, DDA analytics as well. Amnon, I'm sure you're going to get a lot of questions on this PTZ after this webinar. Uh, okay, so line crossing. And now if I'm going to the triggers and I can go to the Z6 and you can see here now I have the preset I just created which called park. So whenever there is a DDA event happening from this camera, Okay, Office DDA, the PTZ, the Z6 PTZ will go to the preset called Park. Okay, of course, all the presets on the PTZ will appear here. And of course, that if I have more than one PTZ, I can set some of them uh, to go to different presets. Okay, depends on the event. 
Okay, so this is these are basically triggers for uh, DDA on the NPRs. I will stop once again for a second to make sure there are no any other questions. Uh, no, the only question was about the video pop-up, but I think it's clear now. Okay, and the next one is the OSA VMS. Okay, OSA VMS, like the headline says, the sky's the limit. Okay, OSA VMS is more for enterprises. So if you're talking about NVR that has a lot of cameras, the OSIA VMS has a lot of NVRs or many, many, many cameras that, from, that are from many uh, different locations that can be recorded on a, uh, locally directly on a recording server. You don't even need an NVR. You can add all the cameras uh, directly to the VMS. And of course, the VMS supports all the DD analytics. Uh, so you don't need the NVR to, to analyze the, that, the data, okay? So we will use it mostly for uh, uh, enterprise locations, hospitality, retail, and so on. And of course, when we have large control rooms, we usually we will usually prefer the VMS so we can concentrate all the videos on one monitor or several monitors uh, with a decoder and so on. Okay. So again, we are going quickly on the uh, presentation and then I will do it also together with you. So alarm center, alarm linkage. These are the, uh, the steps in general. And then we can choose the type of event that we want to set and the, what channel will uh, uh, trigger, okay? I promise that when I show you, it will be much faster. One second. Okay. Let's do it for a second here. Let's do VMS, where you are. There you are. Okay, so this is my, my uh, OSIA VMS. Like we said, we need to go to the alarm center. And in the alarm center, we're going to alarm linkage. Okay. Perfect. Now, on the alarm type, we need to choose the alarm type we, which we want to set triggers for. Okay. In our case, we, we are talking about sterile area or line crossing. These are the DDA analytics, okay? But of course we have here all the kinds of events that are supported by the, the VMS. Let's take line crossing for a second. Once we switch to line crossing, we will get all the channels, all the channels that support line crossing. On the VMS, when we're talking about line crossing, line crossing is detected both on old pixel-based line crossing and new DDA line crossing. So we can see here the DDA cameras, for example, but we can also see here older cameras that also support line crossing. But this is pixel-based and this is DDA AI-based, okay? Of course, the, the triggers are the same, just the event, most probably the DDA event, is much more reliable than the pixel-based event of the DMA, okay? So let's take, for example, Office DDA, this one. And now we have different kinds of uh, triggers. First of all, we have audio. Audio is local audio on the, on the VMS itself. It can be a buzzer, it can be a siren sound. Actually, you are the one that's controlling which sound it will be because it will, uh, you, the VMS allows you to upload audio files to it. PTZ control is, is exactly the same, okay? So we, want, we need to choose which PTZ we want to, uh, to add. Okay, so now we added the PTZ control. And you can see the number of the preset. We only have one preset here. We don't have the name, okay? But I only configured the preset parking, which is saved as preset number one on the camera. The camera, the, the VMS still cannot uh, inherit the preset names that we saved on the OSIA on the, to, the, to its own interface. So now the preset will only be number. In this case, we only have one preset, which we just saved. And this is the only one we can save. Okay, so this is PTZ uh, control. 
record. This record is record directly to the VMS, okay? If we have a record server, this record will go to the recording server, okay? So this is a record. Alarm view, okay? Alarm view is the alarm view of the VMS itself. Okay, I'm going for one second outside from this interface. We have here alarm view settings. Okay, in a second. Here, alarm view settings. And this is the alarm view. What will happen, I mean, when there is an event, what will happen, where this, uh, this event will go, if it will auto close or manual close after the event is done and how long it will hold, okay? This alarm view is actually here. On the main interface live view, we have alarm view. And this alarm view is only handled by the VMS. We cannot manually add video here. Only videos that are set to pop up here as a response to any trigger will show here. Any other event will not come here. Okay, so this is alarm view. We have snapshot. Of course, the snapshot is also being saved on the recording server of the VMS. It's not something remote. Everything is local. Alarm output is exactly like the alarm output of the, of the VMS. Just here, we have a lot of them. So if I click here, you can see that we have a list of all the alarm outputs that we have available on the VMS. Okay, so now, for example, it's not only two different cameras. We can have an event happening in Israel and the alarm output will, will be in, uh, uh, in Denmark or England or doesn't matter where, okay? This is the idea of alarm outputs and the VMS concentrating everything under one roof. Voice broadcast is voice or broadcast that will be streamed through the uh, IPC in general. Okay, so here we can choose any device that supports alarm output. You can see that the list is shorter. Any device that, that supports alarm output. Audio will be output. Audio, audio. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Audio al output. If, for example, this is an NVR, so the audio broadcast will happen through the NVR uh, audio output. And the EC001 is a camera. It's like a camera, it's a, it's a camera device. So the audio broadcast will happen through the EC001. If we choose it, we also need to choose which audio file will be played through that device, okay? And everything is being done through the uh, VMS configuration, okay? So again, just for one second, I, I will not explain too much over it, but I just want you to, sh to see and understand. You see, we have here aud audio uploading. So if I click here, you can see we have three files, Shem, Dada, and Guitar. These are just random names. And of course I can add more, okay? I can upload audio devices, audio uh, files from my computer to the VMS. And you can see that this list, when I go back to the alarm center, when I'm doing voice broadcast, these three files are here, Shem, Dada, and Guitar. And if I add more, the device, the list will be longer. Now again, to remind you, just to make, uh, to make everything, uh, uh, to try to sort things in your head. If I'm using line crossing detection, I can use one broadcast for line crossing detection and a different, completely different broadcast for sterile area even from the same device. This is the great thing about the, the VMS or the NVRs or any of our systems, okay? Okay, TV wall is exactly like the alarm view, just that the alarm view is the local client. The pop-up will, will happen on the local client of the VMS and the TV wall will happen on the alarm view of the decoder, if we have a decoder present, okay? And I, again, I just want to show you so you will understand. But if I'm going to TV wall management and I have here a view, you can see that I can set it as alarm view. 
And you can see now that we have here this uh, styrene icon. And now, whenever there, is be, there will be an alarm, if I set up a TV wall pop-up, it will go here. Okay? So this is the difference. Some people are confusing between alarm view and TV wall. So alarm view is the, to the local client and TV wall is to the remote decoder. Trigger email is of course the same. You can see we have emails configured. These are the recipients that we configured. They're all the recipients that you will add on the email settings here. We have, you can see here the recipients. So I can add a new recipient. For example, it's Amnon. And I will add him. And now if I'm going back to the alarm linkage, if I will, if I want to trigger email, you can see I can send the email to Amnon. I can send the email to Tal and I can send it to both of them. Okay. So all the recipients that you added on the email settings will appear here. And last but not least is the SOP. The SOP is not a, uh, is not a standard trigger, okay, if we call it like that. It's not really a trigger that something happens on the system. SOP, if some of you are uh, familiar with it, the short uh, SOP means standard operation procedure, okay? And what it actually means, it means that we can build a set of operations uh, for the operator to do in case there is an event, okay? For example, the VMS is a very complicated, it can be a very complicated system. There can be a hundreds of different uh, events from hundreds of devices, and the response is not always the same. I mean, if we have a, a DDA event of a sterile area in our server room at uh, 2 a.m., for example, it's not like having a DDA event on, uh, on the lobby camera in the middle of the day. I hope you agree. So we can instruct the operator what to do in case there is such an event, okay? So in this case, if we have a, a line crossing detection event from one camera, you can see we have SOPs here. We have an SOP called burglary. We have SOP called server room breach. Of course, we are the one that's creating the SOP. So again, for one second, I will take you to the SOP settings. And you can see we have an SOP called server room breach, and we have an SOP called burglary. As server room breach, we built it. We say that if something happens, or if there is a server room breach, call the supervisor, lock all doors, call the police, watch the playback of the event, take a snapshot of the breach time, and call Gustavo, doesn't matter. And burglary, call the police, lock all doors, activate Sirene, okay? So now we can link these SOPs to events. And back to alarm linkage, we can link the SOP to the event, okay? Where and how we handle it is through the alarm center here. This is my alarm center. And you can see here we have we activated the SOP filter. You can see here, I'm, I'm just sliding for one second. You can see that we currently have 16 events that are waiting to be analyzed. If I remove the SOP filter, now we have 258 events. But out of the 258 events, I don't care about 240 of them. I don't care. The operator doesn't need to do anything about it. If I activate the SOP filter, the, the operator only need to do 16 things. I mean, there are 16 events have waiting for the operator to handle them. And if I click here on the alarm processing, and you can see we had a burglary here. So call the police, local doors, activate Sirene. So let's say I'm the operator. I call the police. You can see that it will log the time the operator did the, uh, handle the event. I handled, I locked all doors and I activated Sirene, I saved the process. You can see that the name of the user, I'm currently logged in as admin, but it can be any, any other user, it is saved. 
And now I can just write with free text, let's say it was a false alarm. Well, we don't have many false alarms, but let's say it was a false alarm. Why there was a false alarm? Because the cleaning person came in at the wrong time. And now I can save it. And now you can see that we have 15 events waiting for processing. One I already processed, and you can see here everything is logged. And as the chief of officer of the building, I can come and see what happened and how it happened. Uh, I click here and I can see that the operator admin, it can be operator Tal or whatever, he handled this event. He called the police at 11.51, he locked all the doors and he activated the siren. It was a false alarm because of the cleaning person. And now I can go and check with the cleaning person why he came at the wrong time and so on. So this is very, uh, uh, very helpful for operators and system, uh, of course, uh, system admins and the security officers. So this is the SOP and this is the last uh, um, trigger. And some failure point that it's also related to us, we need to fix it better. But some failure point that we uh, know about is because if you notice, we have the matrix of the, uh, the triggers. <laughs> on, the, on the far right side, we have the schedule. Sorry, Tal, I muted you. Can you open your mic? Yes, I just noticed. Okay. We need to make sure that the schedule is on because if the schedule is off, nothing will happen. Okay. Even if I said here, for example, I set this one to on and I set what, whatever here on and on, you can see on, 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 but still nothing will happen because you need to remember on the far right side, you have the schedule. So I need to set the schedule 24 seven, for example, and only now things will start to work. So whenever you are configuring triggers on the VMS, always remember the schedule column on the far right side, where, which I think in one of the next versions, we will move it to the far left side. So no one will, will ever un, uh, miss it. Okay. Any questions about the VMS uh, triggers? There are a few questions I will ask at the end. Okay. I'm going back to the presentation. Okay, here we have some videos, but I actually just demonstrated uh, uh, everything. Okay, alarm linkage. This is for the VMS. I just demonstrated everything. The video can use you later when, if you're not sure and you're uncertain. Of course, you also have the recording of this uh, uh, webinar that you, you can use it later. And also for the, for if you want to use only the presentation, you have the videos here. So you have a video of how to configure the VMS. You have a video, I, I told you about the uh, alarm uh, video pop-up, okay? So this shows the video pop-up on the um, on the decoders okay what you see on the bottom is actually the monitors connected to the decoders and you can see now that uh, on the video you can see tv wall is being configured this is actually the video going to the decoder and you can see that once we enable it and we save this configuration we will start getting video pop-ups on the decoder now you can see we set the schedule, we apply. This is the interface and you can see, oh, you can see here how all the decoder is being filled with events that, that are, are currently happening, okay? So this is just a demonstration of alarm uh, a video pop-up on the decoder. And that's it. This is just a general uh, Sorry, map. Uh, Tal, uh, that last video was about audio broadcast. Maybe you can. Okay. Oh. The reason I'm, I'm pointing it out because it's a very usable uh, yes, feature yes. and very unique feature to provision ISR. Okay. I also spoke about it, but uh, uh, you can you can see how it looks now.
Okay, you can see here we have a line crossing. And now on the alarm linkage, we choose line crossing. This is the camera, street counting. And this street counting is actually connected to our uh, uh, horn, our speaker horn, the SH30. And now we activate it. We set the schedule. You, okay, you see, you always need to remember about the schedule. Okay, and I don't know if you can hear, but you can see David passing the line and he hear the message, please hold on. I hope you heard it. I heard it. No, uh, you didn't share your audio, so you, we couldn't uh, hear it. Okay. But, uh, the feature is clear, I think. Uh, basically, connecting next to the camera, there is a speaker mm -hmm. uh, connected to the audio out of the camera. And we can uh, activate any kind of sound that we uploaded to the VMS. OK. Let me see if I can share my audio. Okay, share sound. Sure. I will just I will just go to the end of the clip. Okay, the last few seconds. Please hold on. Okay. I hope now you heard it. We did. Please hold on. Yep. Please hold on. Okay. So this is for. Uh, audio and this is just a general uh, information about which triggers are available on which platform okay so you can see that the pms uh, the camera the ip camera has the least uh, uh, triggers the nvr supports everything except remote video pop-up to a decoder and the vms it doesn't have a buzzer but it can use local uh, local audio files uh, and it doesn't have a push message at the moment. We are also working on it. Okay, and that's it, actually. Uh, okay, this was the last of the uh, DDA analytic certification program in general. Okay, this is the program that we're going to, to hold to all of the uh, installers, all of our partners. Uh, and now it's time for uh, Q and A. Yes, uh, just before we do, please share a screen um, on the website just to show us when we can later on watch this uh, training again. Okay. Um, for all of you, as you know, uh, Provision ISR is uh, uh, set uh, to educate the market as much as possible, at least to, to share the knowledge. Uh, part of it is, of course, uh, all those webinars are being published and uh, recorded and being posted in our website and an e-learning platform that you can learn many, many things, provision ISR solution and then surveillance in general. Uh, so all those webinars are being recorded and posted in our website. We will show you how you can get access to it real quick. Uh, in our website, there is a section called Knowledge Sharing under it, there is a section called live webinars, as you can see. Here you can basically both register to the upcoming webinars. Any upcoming webinars you can register from here directly, or you can view any recording of the past event that we had in the past. Uh, for example, this DDA seminar of today was the fifth one of a full uh, DDA uh, program that we did in the last two months. If you have joined any one of our latest uh, seminars, it was all about DDA, analytic, about object counting and line crossing and stereo area. And today we touched the last part of it, which is the triggers and how to activate triggers when they are available. But you can go to any, any one of our latest seminars and watch them from here and download it so you can uh, view it uh, in your comfort. Thank you very much for joining. This was the end of today's seminar. Uh, there were, there were some questions, no? Register, yeah, yeah. We are more than welcome to register to any of our upcoming ones. And again, we have another one later on today. Thank you very much for joining.